This video will look at a straightforward centripetal force problem involving a driver in, uh, who's traveling through a dip in the road. This driver, Cole Ladrink, is driving at 25 meters per second when he drives into this dip of radius 25 meters. The question is, what is the upward normal force on Cole from his seat at the bottom of the dip? So one important thing is this problem is about coal. It's not about the car, though he's in the car. So let's start by doing a quick drawing to make sure we understand the situation. There's a dip in the road. And Cole's car here is at the bottom of the dip. And coal, here's coal in the car. Okay. Driving. All right. So let's start by doing a free body diagram. So uh, the, since the problem is about coal, we want to worry about what objects are touching coal. And the main thing I think of is sitting in a seat and he's experiencing a weight force from the earth. So he should be experiencing a normal force from the seat and experiencing a weight force down from the entire earth. Now one thing you want to do in this free body diagram that we have not done before is establish just where is the center of the circle that the object is traveling and in this case it would be up here. So there's my center of the circle. And that's very important because in a centripetal force problem, first of all we've already established uh, that there is a winning force. It would not be accelerating if there were not so. So uh, this helps you determine who wins the winning force always points in the same direction as where the center of the circle is. So from this drawing we can see that the normal force will be greater than the weight force. Now this is my y-axis. I have the normal force is greater than the weight force and all of this equals to and of course this is the new thing with centripetal force problems it all equals mv squared over r where v squared over r is centripetal acceleration. So the normal force is equal to mv squared over r plus Cole's weight. So that tells me that the normal force is actually going to be greater than his own weight. He's going to feel heavier when he's at the bottom of this hill. Uh, put some numbers in here. 60, 25 squared over 25 plus and we'll use G as 10, so it's to say 600 Newtons. Uh, it's convenient. Uh, one of the 25s divides away. So now I have that the normal force is 1500 plus 600 Newtons, which is 2100 Newtons. So Cole, at the bottom of the hill, at that moment he's at the very bottom, he experiences an upward force of 2100 Newtons. Now he, because he experiences that large upward force, he interprets that as meaning that at that moment he feels very heavy. Because if he were very heavy, he would press into the seat a lot, and the seat of course would press back according to Newton's third law. So just checking some numbers here, this works out to be about 472 pounds of force. Well, he only weighs 132 pounds. So at that moment he feels 472. That works out to be 3.6 times greater than he normally weighs. So one reason why, for example, on a roller coaster uh, we enjoy the sensations of a roller coaster is at the bottom, we come, say you come off a large hill, at the very bottom of the dip at that moment you feel extremely light. Now another video will examine what happens if you go over a hill. Just the opposite will occur. Instead of feeling heavy, you will feel light. Well in the earlier video we saw that as Cole drove through a dip he experienced a normal force that was greater than his own weight. Now let's look at a problem where Cole drives over a hill. So this is a little different looking in that He's going over a hill, says the radius is 50 meters. And so here's his car up here, and he's inside the car. 
and we need to look at a free body diagram of Cole and so again he is feeling a normal force from his seat upward and at the same time he's experiencing a weight force from the entire earth now since the center of the circle is down here in this case his weight beats his normal force his weight is a greater force than his normal force so our equation will be w minus n equals m v squared over r so rearranging that w minus mv squared over r equals the normal force so uh, just the opposite situation in this case the normal force would be less than his weight so now we can substitute some numbers in uh, be 60 times 10 minus 60 times 20 squared over 50 is equal to the normal force so 600 minus 480 is the normal force so at, when he's at the very top of the hill he's feeling a push from his seat only equal to 120 newtons now 120 newtons is approximately 27 pounds so even though he weighs about 132 pounds at that moment he only feels like he weighs 27 pounds but he feels much lighter um, of course if you've been in a car in this situation you might have felt that strange feeling in your stomach as you go over the top of the hill well uh, we did a problem about coal but we could have just as well done a problem about the food in coal's stomach and the food in coal's stomach is also going over the hill and at that moment the food in his stomach is weighs less than it normally does and so actually uh, the stomach doesn't have to push his heart upward to support it and the nerves sense that and that is one reason why you get a very strange sensation as you go over the top of a hill in this last problem involving coal driving along the road we're going to do a very classic question which is uh, just how fast can coal go uh, over a hill and not get airborne obviously if you go too fast let's say here's the hill and if you're driving along here and you go too fast well at that point you'll go airborne and make contact over here so at this point you would become a projectile so the question is how well how fast can you go and and maintain stay stay on the hill all right well the, the hint is as you can see here if you go airborne then you're no longer touching the seat below you so the key to this problem is just simply realizing on a free body diagram and again down here is the center of the circle the only force acting on coal at that moment would be his weight from the entire earth so the problem is actually quite simple to solve his weight alone is equal to mv squared over r so we would have 60 times 10 equals 60 v squared over 25 so we have 600 times 25 equals 60 times v squared so let's divide by 60 and that divides away so it looks like v squared is 250 so V, this would be, you might call this V max, is 15.8 meters per second. So that would represent the very first speed at which the normal force becomes zero. But if you actually traveled that fast, you would you'd be momentarily airborne, but it'd just be for an instant. Um, but if you went any faster, the, the, more, the faster you went beyond 15.8, well, then the longer you would be in the air. So uh, this is a straight, very classic problem. So remember, the key is to simply make the net, make the normal force equal to zero, and then just set the weight equal to mv squared over r.